For any piece of outdoor gear to have been around for more than 15 years now and only undergone one relatively minor revision, it must be pretty damn good. So, what piece of gear I want about? DMM Renegade Harness. In the days of fast fashion where garments and items get replaced virtually every season, the DMM Renegade Harness really has stood the test of time. The original Renegade came out way back in 2008 and it was an instant success. And then there went a few minor revisions prior to the Renegade 2, as I'm sitting in now, come out in 2013. And then, other than a colour change on the gear loops, nothing's changed since then. So, in over 10 years, it stood the test of time. The Renegade is marketed as an all-around harness, which in reality means it's a trad and winter harness, because you can still use a beefy, fully featured harness for sport climbing or top roping, etc., where you only need to carry a few quick jaws or perhaps nothing. Whereas you can't use a lightweight sport climbing harness if you want to climb trad and have a full on trad or winter rack. It is a male specific harness, although there's so much adjustability in it, which I'll come on to in a second, that it will probably fit a few female body types as well. But there is also a female specific harness called the Puma, which is identical to the Renegade, except it has a, a female specific cut. So the sizes are all a little bit smaller than the Renegade version of the harness, and the waist belt is proportionally smaller to the leg loops compared to the Renegade harness. You also have fewer gear loops on the small and extra small versions of the Puma but that's because there's only so much room on the waist belt and if you get much smaller waist size then obviously you have to lose some gear loops but as I say, other than that they are identical harnesses and the price the same as well currently are sitting at around about £75 The Renegade and Puma harnesses have one of the highest if not the highest carrying capacity of any harnesses on the market they've got a whopping 7 gear loops so that's 3 on each side and a full size gear loop at the back as well One of the few changes between the original Renegade and the Renegade 2 version is the orientation of the front gear loop. So on the original Renegade, the front of the gear loop was at the bottom of the harness and the back was at the top on all three gear loops. Whereas now on the newer version, they flipped it round at the front. So that means that the, your rack doesn't slide as far forward around your leg. And then also, the original Renegade, the gear loops are coated in plastic, whereas on the Renegade 2, they're canvas or Dyneema or basically whatever the rest of the harness is made out of. They also have fully adjustable leg loops which is a rarity these days and this is a simple slide lock mechanism which is the same as the waist loop as well so it's super simple and easy to use and those tuck away quite nicely under these flaps here and then for those of you who've got quite skinny legs which absolutely is not me there's also an elastic loop there so if you need to you can thread that through the elastic to tidy it up as well also on the waist loop again you've got three elastic points to get rid of the loose end you also have four times bolt slots for a nice climbing carry tool again there are different ones in the market i happen to have petzl ones but dmm make their own versions so again two on each side and you simply slot the tool in at the top and then, again, depending what kind of carry tool you've got, clip it down, slide it all the way down, and there you have it. So you can fit two on each side, so tons of capacity for carrying ice screws or ice tools as well. You also have tons of padding in both the hip belt and the leg loops. And this is a closed cell foam padding with internal mesh ventilation and also internal load spreading around the hip belt with a lumbar support at the back. And the final feature of both these harnesses, which is the real selling point to be honest, is the floating waist belt. And this is a feature which, as far as I'm aware, is pretty unique to DMM. And it's an incredibly simple solution to a pretty major problem with harnesses, which is getting them to sit nice and evenly on your hips, regardless of how many layers you're wearing and what your body size is. So the entire padding of the waist belt slides around. I have to loosen it off to show you. The entire padding and gear, gear loop sections of the waist belt slides freely on the webbing of the harness, which means that it's super easy to change the layers you're wearing during the day and it's going to fit a huge range of people. A very common problem with single buckle harnesses is basically having it sit unevenly on you like that. If it's not a perfect fit or if you put extra layers on, you're going to end up with basically a crooked harness, which as well as being uncomfortable, also means that the gear loops on this side are much harder to reach than the gear loops on that side. So yeah, again, this is an incredibly simple solution to a pretty major problem which, as far as I'm aware, nobody else has addressed. Here I'm wearing a size medium harness, 
which weighs in at 415 grams and has a size range between 30 and 36 inch waist. So by modern standards this is a pretty damn heavy harness but when you consider how featured it is and just simply how much material there is in this harness it's not actually that unre unreasonable of a weight. When the initial Renegade came out there's actually very few harnesses on the market which were fully featured like this which weighed less than this. Of course nowadays many harnesses fully designed for climbing weighing at around about 300 grams so 100 grams lighter some even less than that so yeah it is quite a heavy harness but it's worth it for the features that you get. As mentioned this harness is very much designed with being able to carry a big rack in mind indeed that's pretty much its main purpose so think multi-pitch trad climbing or Scottish winter. So this is far from being my full trad rack but just to give you an example of how easily it carries a pretty big rack I like to carry my nuts and maybe small cams on these front gear loops then quick draws on the second gear loops and then things I'm less likely to need such as cross hooks, belay plates on the back gear loops and then also hexes or any big cams at the back as well and then that still leaves space at the rear of the harness for big bulky slings or indeed if you want to carry a, a, a stuff sack of your coat in for example or maybe attach a drink to your back you've got that option too so like I say you can carry absolutely loads on this harness and I like to have it so that the things I'm going to need first are either things you're putting into the rock, the static protection at the front, then the thing you're going to need next, your quick draws in the middle, and then the things you're going to need at your belay, your slings, prosics, belay plate, etc. at the back. But that's just personal preference, everyone racks their gear differently. No matter how you like to do it, you can have more than enough space to do it on this harness. And then if you are using this for winter climbing as well, where especially in Scottish winter climbing, you might need a full rock rack and a half set of ice screws, or you might need a full set of ice screws and reasonably big rock rack you can still do that so you'll struggle to get four carry tools on with a full rack as well but you can very easily fit two carry tools so one on each side as they sit between the front and the second gear loop so you can comfortably, comfortably carry six to eight screws and a full trad rack on the harness So I had, and indeed I still have, the original Renegade harness and that was my main, but basically my only harness for the best part of a decade. I only replaced it fairly recently because you're starting to see some quite high wear on non-load bearing areas. So it is still safe, I do still use it, but yeah I replaced it quite simply because some of the non-essential parts of the harness were finally starting to wear out. But I've had this version, Renegade 2, for two, maybe three years now and it's basically as good as new. Apart from a tiny bit of tarnish on the inside of the gear loops, it looks and feels as good as it did on day one. So not only is it a great and practical harness, but it's also a very hard wearing harness as well. So I'm a trad climber, or at least I was predominantly a trad climber until I moved to France. There's not much trad around here now, but back when I lived in the UK, virtually all I did was trad or Scottish winter. So this harness was perfect for me for that. It's the only harness I ever had for outdoor climbing. I had a very old harness which I still use for indoor climbing, but yeah, that was my go-to harness for everything from yeah, the occasional sport climbing crag, simple single pitch trad in the Peak District to long multi pitch mountain rock routes in Salonia and in Scotland. And while of course it's definitely not a fast and light alpine harness, I did also use it on my first few alpine trips as well. And indeed, if I'm needing to carry a big rack on an alpine rock route now, this is the harness I'll use because my fast and light alpine harness has got nowhere near enough gear loops. So yes, it is quite heavy and bulky, but you can still of course use it in the alpine environment too. Just to add a little bit of balance to this review, there are a few negatives, they're quite minor and also quite obvious really. One being the weight of course. Now, like I say, back when it first came out it wasn't drastically heavier than other harnesses on the market, but these days it is heavier than most rock climbing harnesses. So if you are carrying it a long way, you're gonna notice that compared to other harnesses for example. And going side by side with that, perhaps even more important is its bulk. When it is in your pack and you've packed it down, it doesn't fold down small at all. Because the, the padding in the waist belt and the leg loops pretty stiff it takes a lot, a lot of space it doesn't compress down you can't fold it up into a nice neat bundle like you can a lot of other harnesses so yeah this is not an ideal harness for taking on big alpine routes if you have to do a long walk in it's going to be in your bag because it's going to take up a lot of space that you could otherwise use for something else finally the third slight negative is comfort and while it is designed to be worn all day on big routes actually all the padding in some instances is a negative not a positive because it does dig into you a little bit and it's a very stiff waist belt. Compare that to some more modern harnesses like the Petsa Sitter for example which have got a thin webbing waist belt 
which still distributes the weight and the load quite like quite nicely around you but yeah it's not stiff it's not going to dig into you quite so much so yes you'd happily wear this all day on a single route but you probably wouldn't want to be wearing this harness on a big wall for example where you're wearing it day after day after day unless it's the only harness you've got in which case you'll make do it's much more com comfortable than a skinny alpine harness for example and finally to finish on the three major big positives of this harness it's selling points really first being its carrying capacity there are very few harnesses on the market which have got seven gear loops there are a few with six but there are very few with seven so like i say it probably has the highest carrying capacity of any harness out there so if you like doing big trad routes th this is basically the harness for you secondly and this really is its unique selling point it's the floating hip belt I really can't emphasize enough just how great of a feature this is and it's crazy that nobody else had thought of this before DMM did because it's a brilliant simple solution to a pretty big problem so if you want to have a harness that you can use when you're wearing big puffy jackets with lots of layers in winter and little or no layers when you're rock climbing in summer then this is really the ideal harness for that so while like how I said at the start of this it may be marketed as an all-round harness it's mainly designed to be a big beefy trad and winter harness the fact that you can wear it with lots of layers or no layers at all brings it back around to that all around selling point so if you only want one harness to do it all this is the harness for you and finally it's value okay 75 pounds is by no means cheap there are much cheaper harnesses out there on the market things from decathlon for example the Simmons harness is pretty good and it's about half the price but equally if you compare this to many of its competitors you'd like to be spending maybe double this maybe more than double this on something from Arctrix or Petzl for example so while there are both cheaper and lighter and more comfortable harnesses out there on the market you really will struggle to find a harness which is, is like as good as this and it has stood the test of time there aren't many products out there which have been around for this long and have seen so few revisions to their initial design so yeah dear men hit the nail on the head virtually first time around this is a brilliant harness and i'd highly recommend it